I always want to make, like I always want to do stuff that when we're doing stuff for, for music that fits the, the, makes, it reminds you of the, who is this guy? <laughs> Let's dive into the amazing story of Eminem and 50 Cent's friendship, starting with their lives before they met. After 50 Cent survived being shot nine times in 2000, no label wanted to sign 50 because he didn't have the best reputation, especially when you release a song like How to Rob, where you threaten a lot of people in the music industry with robbery. I rob ODB, but that'd be a waste of time. Probably have to clap him running towards the night. Nobody would want to work with you. On top of that, he already had beef with Ja Rule. The truth of the matter is that in 1999, Ja Rule was robbed at gunpoint in Queens, New York by one of 50 Cent's supposed affiliates. After this, they had a run-in at a club at which Ja Rule was allegedly hostile. But Ja denies seeing the group there, leading to what was probably a simple misunderstanding. Soon after this, 50 Cent released his diss track of Ja Rule, Life's on the Line. However, it wasn't until the next year, 2000, that things got a little physical. In Atlanta, Georgia, the pair were booked to perform at the same club, which ended in a physical altercation between the two. Later that year, 50 Cent was stabbed. 50 Cent's G-Unit crew ran into Murder, Inc. at Hit Factory Studios in New York City, where Ja was allegedly tipped off to their whereabouts. We mention this beef for a reason, as we will refer back to it later. In general, by that time, 50 Cent had made a lot of enemies, so he struggled with labels. This greatly upset the rapper. The producer of Shaw Money XL told 50 that he had just bought himself a new house and that the rapper could record there. He then came with his homies. They then found a DJ called DJ Wu Kid and started recording mixtapes. 50 Cent's records reached Detroit, that is, to Eminem. He couldn't stop listening to them, and Slim Shady was ecstatic. I brought it to Dre. Dre heard it. He was sold. And basically we said, let's, let's do a joint venture. We flew him out to LA. I had a meeting with him and I sold myself to him and told him what I wanted to do. And then got Dre involved. We had a meeting the next day. As 50 Cent said in an interview, I am on the dream team now. I have two of the coolest bodyguards, Dr. Dre and Eminem. Eminem was most instrumental in the process of signing 50 Cent to a record contract. The deal was that it would be a joint venture between Eminem's Shady Records and Dr. Dre's Aftermath Records, all under the umbrella of their parent company, Interscope Records. This was an ideal situation for 50 as an artist, as he had the benefit of having both Dre and M in the studio contributing on the production side of things. In 2002, a track for the film 8 Mile was released under the name Rap Game. In 2003, the historic album Get Rich or Die Trying was released. Eminem featured in two tracks. By the way, in the song Patiently Waiting, 50 Cent called Marshall his favorite white boy. Eminem also took part in the legendary Indie Club music video, and in turn, 50 Cent mentioned his friend in the song. When you select Eminem, you get plenty of groupie love. Yeah, right here is um, Eminem's move, man, but I'ma hold on to this one. I'ma keep this one. He got a, a few of them. Let me just say something right quick. Every year, you don't get to keep these when you go backstage. They exchange them and everything, but I'm telling you, 50 is the only person that I've ever seen that's got to keep a move, man. Okay. What's up, 50? 50 told me if I win an award, he wants to come out here and hold this for me so he gets used to what moon men feel like and how, how heavy they are, because he's probably going to get a lot of them. The guys began to perform together, which caused their friendship to only grow stronger. I'm gonna give it right back though. <laughs> give it back right now. Okay. Give me one. At that time, the feud between Ja Rule and 50 Cent was in full swing, but Ja had a new opponent, Eminem. The reason for this was that Ja was mad at him for signing a contract with 50. Therefore, Ja released his diss track where he mentioned Marshall's daughter. 
Your mother's a crackhead and Kim is a known slut, so what's Haley gonna be when she grows up? Therefore, as a response, Haley's Revenge was released, where we also hear a conversation between Eminem and his daughter. What do you want to be when you grow up, baby? But I don't want to grow up to be like John Rule's little dirty ass kid. But this was not the end of it, because 50 and M made a joint diss track against their opponent. In Hail Mary, the guys taunt Ja Rule for never being able to become the next Tupac. In 2006, these friends released what was perhaps their main joint hit called You Don't Know. You know, it, it feels like that whenever we see each other again. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, if we don't see each other for, for three months, and then, you know, then we do see each other, it's like the same. From 2002 to 2008, Eminem struggled greatly from his drug addiction. Ow! In 2006, M's health deteriorated exponentially, especially after his close friend Proof died. As Marshall himself says, it was a perfect reason to get high again. Sometimes he just laid in bed and cried. And in 2006, Marshall gained a lot of weight. During the peak of that period, weighed 230 pounds at 5'8". Check out just how high Eminem was in an interview where 50 Cent took part. M, this is for you. You ready? Yeah. Now, shorty, she in the club. She dancing for dollars. She got a thing for the Gucci, the Fendi, the Prada. <laughs> 50 Cent had to save the interview. I actually need him to make my music. So he'd be... Me and 50 have three songs together. There's three. Three songs together, and we have, like... We're all over the album. All over it. But, Which means you need but it. so is... In one of the recent interviews, Eminem said the following. I remember things started getting really, really bad when me, 50, and G-Unit did BET's 106th and Park. We performed You Don't Know on the show, and then we did an interview afterward. That's when the wheels started coming off. One of the hosts was talking to me, and I could not understand a word she was saying. 50 had to cover for me and answer every question. Back to the addiction problem. One of the doctors he knew prescribed the rapper other pills. One pill and had a great mood for the entire day. After the children went to bed, he drank one, but of course, that was not enough for M, and he took another one. But also, that wasn't enough. Half an hour later, he felt sick, and managed to get to the bathroom where he dialed an ambulance while lying on the floor. The doctors who arrived diagnosed him with an overdose of methadone. Had I got to the hospital about two hours later, I would have died. A week after he was checked out of the hospital, he started taking drugs again because he couldn't sleep. A month after the overdose, he was predicted to have a relapse and a subsequent death. In that terrible month, he woke up every morning thinking that his time was running out. Walking around my house and thinking every single day, like, I'm gonna fucking die. After Eminem finished rehab, he released the album Relapse, which featured 50 Cent in a collaborative song titled Crack a Bottle. So crack a bottle, let your body waddle. Don't act like a snobby model, you just hit the light up. According to 50 Cent, Eminem planned to drop Relapse 2, but changed his mind. Look at it and you go, creatively what he's deciding to put out. Like we had a whole nother album when he did Relapse, he didn't like the response, so he didn't even put out the whole Relapse 2. Like Damn. Wow. One of the songs that could have been on this album is called Is This Love? Go to hell, are you in T-E-L-L? -L? I'm coming, straight dumbing with my gunning. And in 2012, yet another combo of these two was released. I put my blood, my sweat, my tears in shit. Hip-hop is black music. Unfortunately for some people, it's tough to accept that you got a white artist that does it better than black artists. Also, to quote what 50 Cent said about how important Eminem is to hip-hop culture, he said, I think Eminem is more important to hip-hop than people actually credit him for. Eminem knows how to properly cheer up 50 Cent. That same year, 50 was hospitalized due to food poisoning he got after eating a burger. He felt terrible. Here's what 50 Cent said, recalling Eminem's call. I'm in a dead serious moment. Like, damn, I don't believe this is happening right now. Eminem goes, yo, Fifth, if you were shot nine times, if you die over a burger, this ain't gonna go right. People ain't gonna be feeling this. He's a guy that, one of my best friends, because 
I can trust that he's going to be honest with his, his constructive criticism when it's time to listen to the music before it goes out. In 2015, 50 Cent and Eminem turned down See You Again record. When I see Fiddy Cent revealed that he and Eminem were offered See You Again, which went on to feature Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth, but had to turn down the Furious 7 record because of Eminem's involvement with the Southpaw soundtrack. At the time, we had to make a decision between doing that and the song for Fast and Furious, and that record was a huge success for Wiz Khalifa and them. We decided to do Southpaw because he was invested in the project, Fiddy Cent said. After Eminem's diss on Trump, He's gonna get rid of all immigrants! He's gonna build that thing up taller than this. 50 Cent posted on Instagram saying, still number one, love you, M, you my friend for life. In 2018, M's beef against MGK was the loudest in hip hop. Now I'm called Kamikaze, so that means to kill him. Already fucked one rapper's girl this week, don't make me call Kim. Kelly, they'll be putting your name next to time, next to Benzino. Bye, motherfucker, like the last motherfucker saying alien. After releasing Eminem's reply, 50 Cent naturally backed his close friend. Man, do you see this sh Think about it, the biggest hip hop song on YouTube. Now everybody gotta take an L because of MGK. What the f We didn't have anything to do with this sh Damn, how many times y'all was playing that sh LOL, get the strap, wrote 50 on Instagram. If anybody's thinking of, of doing that type of competition with Eminem, they should stop right away because it's not gonna turn out good. <laughs> nope. In 2019, the guys released a track together with Ed Sheeran. In 2020, Eminem supported rapper 50 Cent on the Hollywood Walk of Fame star ceremony, where he gave an emotional speech. And he's also helped me through a lot of hard times in my own life, and he's always been there when I need him. So 50, congrats on your star, man. Hollywood is making official what I knew from the beginning and Dre knew from the beginning. In an interview, 50 Cent talked about a funny chat with Eminem. He texted me and was like, yo, that, when you gonna fly me in private so I can land on that dick? <laughs> Nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> that you, you just, you said a line of, of supposed to say it made it sound cool. Right? And he said, oh, so he's some other <laughs> stuff, huh? But, but he stopped doing what he's doing to, to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? That shit makes my day on a whole nother level. Cause I'm like, <laughs> what it's, it was random. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, yeah, I have love for him. That's my guy. For those who don't get it, Eminem made a reference to the song, The Woo. Kind of bitch, she be saying some shit like when you gonna fly me in private so I can land on that dick. In 2021, the series Black Mafia Family was released. It's a crime drama television series that revolves around the Black Mafia family, an organization involved in drug trafficking and money laundering. 50 Cent was one of the producers of the series, and he, of course, called Eminem to play the role of the character White Boy Rick. What up, though? What's up, Meech? What the fuck is that? It's White Boy Rick. In an interview, 50 Cent said that Eminem didn't want to take part in the film because of his bad experience with 8 Mile. He struggled to convince him. As some of you may know, after filming this movie, Marshall got addicted to drugs. And in 2022, the guys gave a legendary performance at the Super Bowl halftime show. This performance caused a lot of controversy after Snoop Dogg went on Drink Champs. I hit the homie, the big homie Jay Z, right? The white guy called for, for 50 Cent. Eminem called directly. And he said, That's Yo. his guy. He said, I can't do it if I can't bring 50 up. But that's his guy. 50 Cent commented on this on his Instagram saying, why would he have to say that should be the question? Nor your big homie is running around trying to look like a gay painter. A shot at Hove's John Michael Basquiat-esque hairstyle. In a follow-up post, 50 Cent also wondered why Jay-Z referred to Eminem as a white guy rather than a title that more accurately represents his status in hip-hop culture. Why did he say the white boy? Why didn't he say the biggest rap artist in the world? M is looking at the entire legacy. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing, like with, with M, Dre, and myself, like the, I'm a shady aftermath. The Jay Z and them was putting it together. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they still harbor some energy towards me. 
After such a spectacular show, representatives of the World Cup invited Eminem and 50 Cent to perform, but Eminem refused. The budget was $9 million. Eminem would get $8 million, while 50 would get $1 million. In the same interview, he gave us good news. I'm going to bring his uh, 8 Mile to television. Oh. Does he know that? Yes. He okay, just check it. How, far, lo- how wow. far along in the process are you guys of that? It, we're in motion. Like, I love him. That's my boy. Like, I put him right, right behind my grandma. Wow. Damn, is your guy. Yeah, because he did the most for me. This is an example of a true friendship that will touch anyone and everyone's hearts. The next video I recommend you to watch is about how 50 Cent bullies his enemies and celebrities. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you soon.